Tonight, the new and deadly flooding emergency that rescues the families inside their homes on countertops, on their rooftops, with floodwaters rising. The emergency unfolding in Kentucky, several other states bracing too. And in the Northeast tonight, severe storms now possible. The heavy rain and flash flood warnings now in effect across several states. Tonight, Kentucky's governor calling this some of the most devastating flooding in that state's history. The death toll expected to rise. Hundreds of homes possibly destroyed. Our team standing by in the flood zone. Also, as we come on tonight, those new watches and warnings in the Northeast at this hour. A confirmed EF2 tornado hitting Buffalo, New York, winds up to 115 miles per hour. And the dangerous heat tonight across multiple states. Rob Marciano timing this out. The major news tonight on the economy. The new report out just today driving new recession fears tonight. And what President Biden said about this today. And the American families from New Jersey to Kentucky across this nation who say no matter what you call it, we're feeling it. Rebecca Jarvis reporting. Tonight, the big push. Democrats racing to pass that surprise breakthrough deal on climate. It would be the most ambitious climate undertaking in U.S. history. The bill also lowers prescription drug costs, health care costs, taxing the very rich in corporations. So do they have the votes? With Joe Manchin now on board, Rachel Scott standing by live on the Hill. Also news tonight, this phone call between President Biden and China's President Xi. The candid and direct call lasting more than two hours. President Xi with a warning to the U.S. And will House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and a congressional delegation visit Taiwan amid these tensions? Barry Bruce with late reporting. Russia now responding tonight to that U.S. offer for a prisoner swap to bring WNBA star Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan home. Sources say in exchange for the so-called merchant of death, Victor Boot, being held here in the U.S. The monkeypox outbreak worsening across the U.S. tonight, what authorities are now telling Americans across this country. The emotional scene in front of the U.S. Capitol today, John Stewart blasting Senate Republicans for voting against a bill that would have helped America's ailing veterans. In the Northeast tonight, sharks close to shore. What's now driving this? Ginger Z off the coast of Massachusetts tonight. And America's strong tonight, the effort to save the puppies. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, it is great to have you with us here on a Thursday night, and we begin tonight with the urgent search this evening for the missing after this new and deadly flooding emergency. At least eight people have died in Kentucky, and the death toll is expected to rise. Reports of families who were trapped in their kitchens on countertops as those floodwaters were rising. A grandmother trying to find her family no cell service. She has not heard from loved ones from her grandchildren. What Kentucky's governor is now saying tonight, and look at the pictures in eastern Kentucky. Much of the town of Garrett is now flooded. The water quickly rising after dark, catching so many by surprise. Hazard, Kentucky devastated tonight. This road now a river. The water rushing down a hill, taking this home right down with it. Homes and cars, so many of them destroyed. So many underwater tonight. In Buckhorn, Kentucky, floodwaters up to the roof of this school. Emergency crews using boats to rescue people. So many stranded by the rain. Some rescued from their rooftops. And tonight with roads out and communications down, there is a desperate search to find so many still unaccounted for. ABC's Mola Lenghi leading us off tonight. He's on the scene in Kentucky. Tonight, homes washed away in unspeakable damage. Flash flood emergencies in Kentucky claiming multiple lives. The storms coming in the middle of the night. We have had numerous numerous inches of rain that have fallen over a short period of time. Calls coming into emergency responders for families trapped. Got a family trapped in a home, standing on the counters, water's almost over the counters, and they have no more, there's no way for them to get any higher. Barbara Wicker, desperate for word on her relatives. You said you have five grandchildren stuck? Yes, and two adults. And two adults? Yes, their porches has been knocked off. They waist deep in water. The water is up to their doors. Their phones are probably out. I can't reach them. I can't reach 911. Rescuers facing challenging conditions to reach stranded residents. We know we've got folks now that we just can't get to them because the water, the water is so swift. Everything's gone. Like everything is gone. Rachel Patton's home completely flooded. The water deep. We had to swim out, and it was cold. It was over my head. Floodwaters inundating this school. Oh my! The destruction revealed when they receded. Waterways filled with debris, cinder blocks, all that remain where some buildings used to be. Kentucky's governor calling up the National Guard, warning the death toll 
will rise. Asking everybody to pray. There's a lot of people out there who need help who are really scared right now. And we're doing the very best we can to reach each and every one of them. Late today, more flash flooding in St. Louis. Reports of people trapped at a daycare coming just days after that area was hit by devastating floods. Yeah, St. Louis getting hit again tonight. Let's bring in Mola Lenga. He's live in Whitesburg, Kentucky. Uh, and Mola, we can see the water there right up almost to that overpass over your shoulder. Yeah, David, this river, the water still much higher than it normally is. As you can see, homes and businesses nearby still submerged, still flooded out. The devastation is widespread, and there seems to be more rain coming to many of these same areas tonight, David. Mola Lenghi on the scene for us. Mola, thank you. Kentucky and several surrounding states, as you heard him report, still under a flood threat tonight. And in the northeast at this hour, bracing for potential severe storms here. Tonight, the damage coming in from an EF2 tornado that hit southeast of Buffalo, New York, winds 115 miles an hour. And of course, the heat, too. More than 36 million Americans remain under heat alerts all the way to the northwest, and at least two lives now lost to heat in Oregon. Senior meteorologist Rob Marciano live in Portland, Oregon again tonight. Of course, he's tracking it all. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. While this heat wave has turned deadly, the more pressing concerns tonight are those storms rolling back into the flood zone and in the northeast where that tornado uh, hit Buffalo. We've got to watch up for much of New York and now into New England for the next couple of hours and a flood watch for Kentucky and West Virginia. Look at that cluster that just went through St. Louis. They can't catch a break. That's what's going to stir more flash flooding and a huge watch from the Great Basin to the high plains from that monsoon flow. Here's the rain into the weekend. South of that front, the Carolinas to Texas, heat and humidity continues here in the west. It's dry, but but it is very hot. Temperatures will be in the triple digits. Excessive heat warnings into Saturday. It will be triple, triple digits through Saturday. The heat not breaking here in Portland, likely not till Sunday or Monday. David, forget about people across this country tonight. Rob Marciano again this evening. Thank you, Rob. We turn now to the other major news this Thursday night. The new report out tonight raising fears of recession in the U.S. The nation's output of goods and services, the GDP, fell 0.9% in the past three months, the second quarter of decline in a row, which typically has been the definition of recession. But tonight, President Biden pointing to other key factors, too, among them the jobs numbers, saying this economy isn't an easy one to label right now. But whether it's officially a recession or not, Rebecca Jarvis tonight with families across the country who say they're feeling this on everything they're paying for. Tonight, whether you call it a recession or not, the U.S. economy is losing momentum at the same time American families are facing the highest inflation in a generation, hitting those on fixed incomes like retired nurse Priscilla Jordan especially hard. I feel like a recession is here. Are you at the point where you're cutting back? where you're I, having to pick and choose. I may look at a, um, a steak that I would normally treat myself to maybe once every two weeks. Now it's once every two months. From New Jersey to Kentucky. Everything's going up, but my paycheck is not. Kentucky single mom Asia Mabry saw her monthly rent soar from nearly $900 in May to over $1,200 in June, a more than $300 difference forcing her to move. I am now in a one bedroom and I am seeing more than I was with the two bedroom. The Commerce Department reporting today that from April to June, consumer spending slowed, business investment fell, and stores slowed their restocking of shelves. President Biden taking an optimistic tone on the news. If you look at our job market, consumer spending, business investment, we see signs of economic progress in the second quarter as well. David, the National Bureau of Economic Research is the nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that officially declares when recessions begin and end here in the United States. And they look at metrics, including GDP, but also including things like unemployment and jobs, which have held up despite this record inflation. Many economists tonight now forecasting a recession will begin towards the end of this year or early next. David. Yeah, a lot of competing indicators, but really it's what Americans are feeling at home. Rebecca Jarvis tonight, thank you as always. We turn next tonight here to the big push on Capitol Hill tonight. Democrats racing to pass that surprise breakthrough deal on climate. It would be the most ambitious climate undertaking in U.S. history. The bill would also lower prescription drug costs, health care costs, taxing the very rich in corporations to bring down the deficit. So do they have the votes with Joe Manchin now on board? Rachel Scott on the Hill again tonight. Today, Senate Democrats are rallying behind a deal that would make the largest climate investment in U.S. history, provide tax credits for buying electric vehicles, 
and lower health care premiums for millions of Americans. It came after a sudden reversal from moderate Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, who just days ago upended talks over concerns about inflation. But now he's on board. I just felt there was an opportunity here to really give us an energy policy with security that we need for our nation, but also driving down the prices, the high price of gasoline, driving down inflation was my number one goal. The bill includes $369 billion to fight climate change, $64 billion to lower premiums for Americans buying their own health insurance. Medicare would be allowed to negotiate the price of prescription drugs, passing along the savings to consumers. And seniors would pay less for medication, with out-of-pocket expenses capped at $2,000. It would be paid for by raising taxes on big corporations and the wealthy. If the bill passes, it would be a huge victory for President Biden, who today insisted it would help fight inflation in a way Americans will feel. But simply put, the bill will lower health care costs for millions of Americans. <clears throat> it will be and uh, it will be the most important investment, not hyperbole, the most important investment we've ever made in our energy security. But to pass, the bill needs the support of all 50 Senate Democrats. And tonight, Kirsten Cinema of Arizona won't say if she's voting yes. Do you back this deal? Are you comfortable with the tax Excuse increases? Us guys. Excuse us, guys. Have you spoken to the president about it? But after more than a year of stalled negotiations, the leader of the House progressives says they are on board. I think we should get this done. The American people deserve it. Um, we, need to, we need to show them that we can deliver. Let's just get it done. All right, so let's bring in Rachel Scott, as we always do. And, Rachel, for this to pass, they need every single Democrat in the Senate, of course, to vote yes. Uh, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer telling Democrats in so many words to stay focused uh, and to stay healthy. Yes, David, because Schumer not only needs the support of all 50 Democrats in the Senate, he also needs them to be physically present here on Capitol Hill to vote on that legislation. As of now, Senators Joe Manchin and Dick Durbin are recovering from COVID-19. That could complicate the timeline for Democrats who are looking to get this passed by the end of next week, David. Yeah, no votes over Zoom like the rest of America operates now these days. Rachel Scott tonight. Rachel, thank you. In the meantime, we turn now to Russia responding tonight to the White House on that offer of a prisoner swap to bring home WNBA star Brittany Griner and former Marine Paul Wieland. Tonight, Russia's foreign minister now saying he'll pay attention to Secretary of State Antony Blinken's request for a phone call when his own schedule allows. Here's our senior White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. Tonight, Russia says there is no agreement yet on the White House's offer of a prisoner swap to bring WNBA star Brittany Griner and former Marine Paul Wieland back home. ABC News confirming the White House offered an exchange for notorious Russian arms dealer Victor Boot, nicknamed the Merchant of Death. Is there any concern that by going public with this offer now that you showed your hand too soon? The president has been very clear about this. He wants to make sure that they come home. Uh, and he has made this a top priority. I don't want to go into details about that. As you, as you imagine, uh, in order to have success, uh, we need to not negotiate in public. The White House announced Wednesday that an offer is on the table, but won't say if they are willing to negotiate further. Whelan's twin brother, David, is hopeful. I think we were all taken by surprise. And it's nice also to know that the offers are being made. Trevor Reed, who spent two years in Russian custody and was released in a dramatic prisoner swap in April, those images seen around the world, knows this process all too well. In these situations, you never know if, if that's going to work out until your feet are on U.S. soil. I would be cautiously optimistic, but I would be optimistic about, uh, about the chances of, of that working out. Now left out of the White House's proposed offer is detained American teacher Mark Fogel. He was sentenced to 14 years for drug charges similar to the charges against Brittany Griner. David, I talked to Fogel's lawyer today. He tells me he hopes that Fogel will be included in any exchange and that he hopes the U.S. government is doing everything it can to bring him home too. David. Right. Mary Bruce again tonight. Mary, thank you. And Mary, stick with us here for a moment because, as you know, there's another story out of the White House tonight. President Biden and Chinese President Xi speaking on the phone for more than two hours today. Both sides reporting the talks were, quote, candid. But President Xi warning the U.S. against, quote, playing with fire by opposing China and supporting independence for Taiwan. Now, all this comes as Speaker Nancy Pelosi is planning a trip to Asia with a delegation that may include a stop in Taiwan. And, Mary, I know there has been some support for this visit from uh, both Democrats and Republicans, this idea of visiting Taiwan, but no support from the White House on this idea. 
David, this is putting this administration in a really uncomfortable position. The White House says the speaker can determine her own travel, that the president isn't going to tell her what to do. But Biden has previously said that the U.S. military doesn't think this is a good idea. And Beijing has made it very clear. If the speaker pays an official visit to Taiwan, they will view it as a provocation. The Chinese warning the U.S. today, quote, playing with fire will set yourself on fire. David. Mary Bruce on both stories tonight. Mary, thank you. In the meantime, next to the monkeypox outbreak here in this country tonight, more than 4,600 cases reported, up from 200 just one month ago. And what authorities are now telling Americans across this country. Here's ABC's Janae Norman tonight. Tonight, health officials racing to contain a monkeypox outbreak are urging all Americans to take the virus seriously. Every American should pay attention on monkeypox. Monkeypox is not COVID but it is contagious, it is painful, and it can be dangerous. The CDC now reporting more than 4,600 cases, that number jumping from just 200 cases just a month ago. We know one of the main modes of exposure for this particular illness uh, is through direct contact, close contact, skin-to-skin -skin contact, possibly even face-to-face -face contact exposure to droplets or virus that may be in the mouth. And while right now most people getting sick have been gay or bisexual men, doctors stress anyone can get it. Two children have already been infected, and today the CDC confirming a pregnant woman also contracted the virus. Monkeypox can be passed to a fetus, but this woman's newborn was not infected. Doesn't appear that uh, the, the virus was transmitted. Again, both mom and babe are doing well. And David, health officials say they'll have more than a million doses of the monkeypox vaccine in the coming weeks. This is Health and Human Services weighs whether to declare monkeypox a public health emergency. David. Janae Norman tonight. Janae, thank you. Now to the growing number of shark sightings and in some cases shark attacks here in the Northeast, sharks closer to shore. So tonight here, what's driving this? Our chief meteorologist Ginger Z off Massachusetts tonight. With more than two dozen reported shark encounters along our coast this summer, New England is now gearing up for its peak great white season. This is where the shark hunt begins. Greg Scomel and the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy are on a mission to tag and track these creatures off the coast of Cape Cod. Why are we seeing more sharks this season? The sharks are feeding close to shore. Shark populations are coming back and we got lots and lots of people going in the water. So that just creates almost the perfect storm in terms of the potential for shark attacks. The Northwest Atlantic has warmed f three times faster than the rest of the world's oceans and the rest of the planet. Right. Could water temperature have anything to do with an increase in shark encounter? For certain species, absolutely. Out on the water, we see 10 sharks in just four hours. Wow. I see it. Isn't that incredible? They use sonar to tell if the shark is tagged already. Oh, there we go. This big one, 3083. When a shark is detected, that real-time data is relayed to beach managers and lifeguards. So within literally seconds, that lifeguard is getting a text. White shark somewhere in our swimming area. Most sharks we saw were too low to tag until lucky number 10. Got it! We got a tag shark. With Boston behind me, New England is well aware that they've got high shark numbers all the way through October. Greg anticipates many beach closures, but he gave us one great tip, David. Don't go in beyond your waist, and sharks should not be interested. All right, that is a good tip. I know many are staying out altogether. Ginger, our thanks to you again tonight. And when we come back here, a very emotional scene in front of the U.S. Capitol. John Stewart blasting lawmakers for blocking a bill that would have helped America's ailing veterans. And then later tonight here, rescuing the puppies. Tonight, an emotional scene in front of the U.S. Capitol. John Stewart blasting Senate Republicans for blocking a bill that would have provided health care for millions of veterans sickened from exposure to toxic burn pits. I'm used to the lies. I'm used to the hypocrisy. I'm used to the cowardice. I've been here a long time. Senate's where accountability goes to die. Senate Republicans objecting to a budget issue in the bill after it previously had large bipartisan support. To the index and call it the mega billion drawing. Tomorrow's drawing $1.1 billion now, the second largest jackpot in the game's history. If you take all the cash up front, it's still more than $648 million. Good luck. Finally tonight here, the effort to save the puppies. America strong. Tonight in Heath, Ohio, outside Columbus, the Licking County Humane Society on a mission to save these puppies, bringing them into safety crate after crate, 
rescuing them, they say they weren't being cared for. The team holding the tiny puppies, the veterinarians checking them out, their ears, Anna, Arthur, Beth, Betty, Merlin, Sam, and Taylor, too. 80 dogs rescued in all from one week old to 12 years old. When word got out, the community asked how they could help, too. Donating money and supplies, Chris Mitchell fostering five dogs in her home. And right here tonight, Hi, David. the society's executive director, Lori Carlson, with news already. The first adoption, this Chihuahua mix, Caroline. Cheryl is the very first adopter of one of our 80 dog rescues. She's adopting Caroline here. The puppies getting their shots, microchips, and medical attention. Lori tells us all of them will survive. <laughs> baby. Thankful for their volunteers and for the families welcoming these dogs into their forever homes. An incredible effort. Let's find those dogs' homes. Good night.